Want to welcome you into another Stacking the Box podcast. I'm Matt Verderam, and we are joined by a four-time Pro Bowler, defensive end for both the Washington Redskins and the Tennessee Titans, Brian Arakpo. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Doing well. Thanks for joining me. You know, I, uh, let's talk right off the bat. You're joining us as part of a partnership with, with, with Caesar, and I'm curious, um, you know, now that you're retired, game day is a lot different for you. Uh, you know, what do you do on, on your, your retirement Sundays? And, and I hear you're spending it with uh, your, your pup, Biggie. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm a big, big pet advocate. I love pets. And I have my, uh, my small multi-pool, Biggie. Um, ironically, his name is Biggie, but he's very miniature, and I love him to death. But, um, no, we, we spend a, a great amount of time each and every Sunday watching the big game. He loves football just as much as me. Um, and I'm big on just togetherness, you know, with, when it comes for pet owners and pets of themselves. And we all get together on Sunday, have our favorite foods to eat. I'm a pizza guy. Biggie loves his Caesar seven layer. Um, and it's, it's just been a great relationship we've been having and bonded ever since. I know everybody expects the huge football parties and things of that nature, but it's nothing better to spend time with my own pet, Biggie, and just have a great time with some with, uh, with a lot of great food that uh, Caesar provides. And uh, it's just a lot of togetherness and, and bonding that we 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 able to, you know, do throughout those football games. You know, I'm, I'm curious. You are a Texas native. You went to the school of the University of Texas. And then, of course, you went on to the NFL at a 10-year career, distinguished one at that. What was the most special time for you? Was it Friday Night Lights playing in that atmosphere in high school? Was it Saturdays in Austin or was it Sundays? Man... That is a great question. I've never been asked that question. You know, that's so let me think about it. Huh, that's a great question. Um, probably I would say there's nothing better than um, just being a hometown guy. I'm from Texas, Houston, playing in Austin, which was at the time everybody wanted to go to be a Texas Longhorn. If you're born and raised in Texas, you want to be a Longhorn. Forget the other schools. Uh huh. You want to be alone. So probably Saturdays, you know, Saturdays underneath those lights at, the, at, the, at DKR Stadium. Man, there's nothing better than that. You know, as you point out, when you were a Texas Longhorn, that was the school to go to, especially for, for guys coming out of your state. I'm curious, you know, this, the school has not been as strong in football in recent years. It, it's, it's been a program that hasn't been able to find itself. What do you think has to happen for the Longhorns to get back to being who they were when you were there and when Vince Young were, was there and, and all the rest of them? Man, another great question. And honestly, I just think we all have to kind of lower our expectations. You know, I mean, but just to be quite honest with you, everybody, all my, my, myself, the fan base, everybody, we have to kind of lower our expectations to take it one game at a time. You know, we every year we go through this or we're, we're going to compete for it a title, things of that nature. Yeah, that's the ultimate goal. But then you overlook the Texas Techs or the Kansases or whatever team that's in front of us at the moment, you know. So we have to take it one game at a time. Um, and it's OU this week. Obviously, that's a huge game, big rivalry game. Um, and those guys are going to be ready to play along with Oklahoma. But um, that's the only most important thing right now. We can't worry about, you know, what's going to happen in the future. Can't worry about the week after, the week prior. It's OU, one game at a time. Are you excited about Texas joining the SEC here in a few years, or does it piss you off that they're leaving the Big 12? Man, I'm going to be honest with you. We had a lot of great times with the, with the Big 12. I had a lot, of, a lot of success. Big 12 was rolling in, in my time. I mean, SEC was good, but we were rolling too, you know, as far as every team in the Big 12. So, it's a bittersweet thing, you know, but um, sometimes it's always good to close the chapter and, and, and get ready to open another one. This is, and, you know, I'm going to take it back to my partnership with Caesar. Uh, it's, it's Like I said, it's always good to close the chapter, and I had a great partnership with them, and we was able to come up with a great event that we're hosting this weekend. So it's, it goes from one thing to another, and that's the same thing I'm in. Like, normally I – I have my shoulder pads, helmet, ready to rock and roll. Now I'm partnered with Caesar, and we're able to have a great home game, 
um, activities and, and event this weekend with, when it comes to pet lovers, including myself. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I wanted to ask you as a former NFL player who spent 10 years in the league, um, you know, right now the, the, the big controversy right now surrounding the NFL has been this, this stuff with Tua Tagovailoa and the, the concussion that he sustained on Thursday against the Bengals. Um, you know, and whether or not he had sustained one four days prior, and it, it's it's kind of unclear, at least you know from a technical standpoint. Do you think the NFL is failing its players by allowing these guys to go out there, um, maybe not having a, a full clearance, or 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 at least not a clear understanding of what had happened four days prior? Do you think that the NFL needs to do more? That there's something that needs to be done from the union? Uh, you know, where do you fall on on all this talk about Tagovailoa and what happened with him on Thursday night? Yeah, that was an unfortunate situation. I hope, I hope to God, I never see that again. So let's let's pray for that. We hope we, as fans, as players, former players, as parents, we hope we never see that again. So, and, I, and I'm sure I've had conversations with with coaches and, and players as well, personnel that NFL is on top of it as we speak right now. Um, NFL PA is on top of it as we speak right now. So I'm pretty sure that. Mistakes happen, and hopefully, uh, most likely, I will not say hopefully, but most likely won't happen again. Staying in the NFL, I'm curious, uh, where was the toughest place for you to play? You know, I ask just about every former player this. What, what was the loudest stadium, the toughest stadium for you to go into and try to win a ball game? At? That's, a, that's a great question, and I, I want to say, oh, man, great question. Probably the toughest place to play. Not – particularly the team, but the toughest place, mm, Seattle. Seattle's tough. Yeah. Seattle's very tough. Those, those fans, they get loud. It was, it's a neck and neck. Seattle and Kansas City, two of the loudest places I've played, but I'll probably get the edge to Seattle. That 12-man thing that they got over there, that's, that's, that's the real deal, man. They, you can't hear anything. Like, you literally have to learn your, you know, we have to do – codes and stuff with hand signals and things just to communicate on and off the field. That's how loud it is. But, um, yeah, if I had to name a place, definitely Seattle. Of all the teammates you had, I know you've had a lot of them over your 10 years, who's who is the guy who you just looked at and said, that guy, like, everybody here is a great athlete. We're all in the NFL. To get to this point, you got to be a great player. But, like, who is the guy, like, that dude, even by the NFL standards, is just ridiculous from an athletic perspective? Or teammate wise, um, yeah. hmm, athletic, athletic wise, that's a great probably. You know what? That's, I would probably say um, Trent Williams. Mm. Trent Williams, offensive tackle for the 49ers, all pro tackle, a good friend of mine as well to this day. He, um, he is probably the I thought I was a freak. He is, a, you know, everybody thinks they're a freak athlete or whatever the case may be, but. To be 300 and plus pounds, six four six five, um, be a, naturally a big position. The guy runs faster than you. The guy's stronger than you. The guy is smart. The guy, I mean, he can dunk a basketball. The guy can hit a baseball. The guy can, I mean, it's crazy. I, I've never seen anybody that big. That we you know with that type of freakishly uh, explosion and athleticism, so definitely Trent Williams comes to mind when you come to that uh, type of uh, stature. He's enjoying a pretty nice career. I think there's a pretty good chance he's going to be getting fitted for a gold jacket about five years after retirement. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you too about obviously you spent six years with Washington, had a, had a great career there before you moved on to Tennessee, and. Oh, they have been a franchise. You had, you had some, excuse me. You had some success there with the Redskins, but they've been a franchise under Daniel Snyder that's been in the news at times for the wrong reasons. Uh, Snyder's had a very controversial ownership of the team, to put it mildly. Um, do you think that Washington would benefit from a change in ownership? Do you think that that would help them to kind of get back to their winning ways back in the days, of, you know, Joe Gibbs and, and and all their championships in the eighties and nineties? Matt, you know better than this, man. You know you ain't gonna get that much out of your hands. It's a fair question. It, you you <laughs> have to fair. answer it, but it's a fair it's question. Fair. It's fair, but man, I got nothing, nothing but um, respect and um, you know, for and admiration for a team 
and for Snyder and, and them uh, making my dreams come true. So, you know, that's, I mean, I've been playing this game for a very, very long time. And all of our dreams is to one day play in the NFL. And for that team to take a chance on me and to change my entire life, um, I'll never forget that. So I would love for them to turn things around and, and start winning. We all would that have any type of, um, you know, part of that organization. So we're hoping that happens one day. Um, and I wish them nothing but the best with the new chapter that they have um, with Ron, with Coach Rivera, or Coach Rivera, and his staff moving forward. You know, what was your finest moment, or what was maybe your favorite moment? When you think back on your your ten years in the NFL, uh, what's a memory that stands out to you as is one of the best? Man, besides the camaraderie with my teammates, you know, in the locker room, but as far as one particular memory, man, just beating the the, the, the Chiefs. In the, in the opening round of the playoffs when I was with Tennessee, when we had no chance in hell to that nobody projected us to win that game. Highly favored. I mean, the game was so highly favored, one-sided, that it was almost a – it was, it was a shock for us to come back and win that game, especially with us going down 21-0 and to able to finish that game off with a – with the field goal kick and, and advance to the next round. Not too many highlights when it comes to – didn't, we didn't make the playoffs a ton in my career, but that particular moment to be such an underdog and to go on there and finish the game um, with the victory and move on to the next round um, with my teammates, it was uh, something I'll never forget. Now, I wanted to ask you – we have a few more minutes here with uh, four-time Pro Bowl Brian Arakpo working with Caesar. Um, you were, uh, you were in Washington when Robert Griffin III showed up and, you know, he's, he's a guy who always fascinated me because his talent was off the charts. I mean, one of the most athletic guys, and I asked you who was the most athletic player I ever played with, RG3 comes in same year as Andrew Locke, number two overall pick. And there's a guy who right away has success in the league. Um, I'm curious if he had been able to stay healthy, unfortunately, you know, could not at the knee injury. Do you think he could have been a, a great quarterback in the NFL based on what you saw out of him? Absolutely. No doubt about it. And I don't think nobody – I think everybody will tell you the same thing. You know, but the only thing the, – the, the unfortunate part is that this game we play, injuries happen. You know, it's 100% prone that you will get hurt eventually. You know, myself, RG, Trent, you name it, anybody, all my teammates have been hurt at some point. And, but RG3 was that special guy that if he would have stayed healthy – He'll still be playing on Sundays at a very high level um, because the guy was talk about another freak. He was one of the fastest guys I've seen, you know, play, especially at that position. Dual threat quarterback. Guy was unbelievable. I And you remember, I'm a Texas guy, so I've yep. been no RG3, you know, and I'm so glad I got out of Texas before he took off of Baylor. But just watching him from afar, being able to be a teammate of mine, that rookie year was amazing. I mean, hell, that was our first time making it to the playoffs. Yeah. And for that Washington organization at that time in a while, you know. So it was, you know, like I said, we, we look back at that year. We wish we would have never got hurt, but things happened. But, um, yeah, if we can take that back and he was able to stay healthy, he would definitely still be a top-tier quarterback today. My last question for you. When you were in Washington, you guys had one heck of a coaching staff, and obviously that's bared out now over the years. You had that famous staff with Matt LaFleur on it, Sean McVay, of course. Both Shanahan's were there. Um, you know what, what? Did you know in, in, at the time that like th this coaching staff is going to produce a, a lot of head coaches? I mean, it, it really is, if you look back on it, one of the more loaded staffs in, in quite some time in the NFL. Yeah, when you look back, you, when you look back at it, it's uh... – that was crazy. That was crazy. Um, and um, a little little Easter egg was um, um, Arthur Smith, uh, the um, coach for Atlanta Falcons. He was actually a part of um, before the Shanahan, but he was a part of that Washington franchise as well at, around that time, a, a little bit before. But it's just crazy to see LaFleur, Le, Le McVay, Kyle. All, I mean, these guys were just – so green at the time. I wouldn't, and when I say green, it's like they had to pay their dues. Yep. You know, there were young coaches. 
trying to make a name for themselves, but you can see the hunger and desire each and every day. Um, and we knew it was only a matter of time before they'd get their opportunity. Didn't know it would be this quick, but we <laughs> knew it was only a matter of time. And, and look at the success they're having. Man, well, I credit those guys. Those are good friends. Those guys are just great people, man. Great people. Um, expect, expect the most out of you at the same time. Just have a lot of fun with you. And, uh, you know, I wish them nothing but great success uh, moving forward in the National Football League, man. But I like I do like to say one thing, though. We do want you guys to go follow the Titans page, Instagram, Twitter, um, and also Caesar.com for this important event. I wanted to, to emphasize this important uh, event that we're having there in, uh, there in Nashville. It's um, obviously with my, myself will be there. It's that sixth and Peabody. Um, it's going to be a great, great experience for all pet lovers. And like I said, we're bringing everybody together. It's all about togetherness. It's all about having a great atmosphere along with your pet, your pets. The very first pet-friendly home gate, tailgate, home gate experience. Excuse me. Um, and I'll be there. Be a total, total uh, VIP experience. Have a lot of fun. Watch the game. They'll be playing my former team. Uh, teams, I should say, Tennessee yeah. Titans, Washington <laughs> Commanders. So that should be a lot of fun. But man, get to watch games with your dogs or your cats or whatever the case may be, um, or your pet all together and join the Caesar brand. It should be a lot of fun. That's right. It's going to be the Brian Arakbo Bowl on Sunday. And look, if you have if you have pets, make sure to get over to Caesar. Uh, get get your uh, pet food there, quality product. Brian, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time and uh, all the best with the event coming up this weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt.